The patch of grass that you can see on the screen is in Western Park, Sheffield. It was filmed at around four o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon in February. Standing on this patch of grass and looking straight ahead, you are surrounded on three sides by a privet hedge, approximately six feet high. Directly in front of you, behind the hedge, is a large glass house in a very bad state of repair. To your right is Western Park Museum, which contains many relics from Sheffield's industrial past. And behind you, about 20 yards away, is a bandstand which has been boarded up due to persistent vandalism. This is the patch of grass where, on a summer's evening, sometime during 1983, I first had sex. Darlington, County Durham. There was a sort of holiday apartment. Off Gaston Avenue, got kind a of white trash area. Quite late. Twelve o'clock. Much better than masturbation. I also remember I was wearing trousers, which was a bit of silly. We were wandering around Soho, looking for the nightlife. Probably whiskey. I used to drink loads of whiskey. Behind a two-seater settee in a block of flats, right in the middle of the town. It was in someone's house at a party. Old enough to be right. She was uh, forty-two. We used to go, he used to put his hand up, his skirt, and he'd be so tender and everything. But the thing is, it was a, it's a whole lot of romance. It all seemed a bit hole in corner, to be quite honest with you. I think we were probably unaware that it was happening. It's like when you go to your first disco, you don't realise that you're about to dance, or after you've danced, you don't realise what you've done. It's something that you do. We'd been going out together for some time and she'd started taking the pill. So I suppose I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. We were in a nightclub in Sheffield called The Limit, and we decided to leave. I don't remember whose idea it was. It seems that it was mutual. But maybe that's just me trying to be right on. Well, I decided I was going to lose my virginity because I was sick of it, and I'd sort of... I'd actually had a boyfriend for ages before, but I never let him have sex with me. And then one day I was sitting at home and I thought, this is getting stupid. I'm going to have to do something about it. So I went out and I went and I met the bunch of people that I always used to hang out with. And there was this one guy and he was always trying to get up with me constantly. So I decided I was going to let him, basically. Uh, um, the girl I'd been with for some time and I hadn't made any uh, lunge. That, I couldn't get to that bit, the lunge. So she asked me to get into the back of the, the uh, car and to and she to, she wanted to do it. I should have been at home cleaning up after the lunch at my family's house. And I'd escaped because this guy was going away. He was leaving town, leaving the village of Scalawa. And um, I, prob I never expected to see him again, really. And it was kind of a final sort of tryst. I suppose. <laughs> I was 26, right? So I'd spent a lot of time uh, trying to have sex with people and, and, and just actually not doing a very good job of it. It was a question of, like, getting out of school really quickly and getting behind a settee really quickly and just fumbling about with hands really quickly and uh, stopping really quickly. We were in this sort of bar playing pool and um, I've been seeing this guy all summer and he said to me, do you want to go back to my flat? And I said, OK. <laughs> you know, it was taken as read that if you were with someone for a long, long time, then that must be, you know, what, what would happen? They got pissed. Chatted to this bloke that I have to say I'd never met before. He was he was a bit of a strange person, but quite an interesting guy. Um, went into the bathroom at this party and locked the door and went for it. And she just lay down on the bed, opened her legs, and that was it. And we just got in and did the business.
We walked towards the park together. I can't remember if we talked or not, or if we did what it was about. When we reached the park, we climbed over the railings and went towards the back of the glass house. Its three sides of privet made it seem kind of private in a way. First time uh, was the back of a car. Um, I thought it was a woman, but it wasn't, it was the back of a car. By the side of uh, a little stream and in the middle of a lovely bed of wild irises. Uh, it's quite grotty. Um, I had a sort of sofa in it and a couple of paintings of uh, sort of Paris streets in the rain and stuff. On a, a wooden pallet, because that's what you did in squats. You, you slept on wooden pallets. Well, on, on a mattress on a wooden pallet. Well, I remember there was a very horrible, fluffy sort of thing around the bottom of the toilet. You know those mats you have around the toilets? I don't know why you have those, really. I suppose it's to stop men pissing on the carpet. I don't know. But my head was quite near that. It was a big sort of pink, fluffy rug thing. Just a small, rather grubby flat, you know, dirty bed. I mean, it was just... Uh, uh, the whole situation was rather squalid, to be honest, and uh, not what I would have chosen when I was a teenage romantic. It was a warm night, and we took all our clothes off. That's something I've always been pleased about, because it made it feel quite innocent and natural. We were both virgins, you see. I was two or three months away from my 20th birthday. I was so relieved to have had sex whilst I was still a teenager. Well, since I was seeing uh, Semism Loving, I imagine I was 10. Um, I was on the verge of my 15th birthday. I was 14. I would have been about, let me see, 22, I'd say. Um, I think I was like just about 17, 16 or 17. Uh, I have no idea, but somewhere in the region, um, the area between 12 and 22. Three? No, 15. <laughs> I was about, uh, I was almost 18. I was nearly 22. Um, 19. 18 and a bit, I think. 13 or 14. And how old were you? I can't remember. I thought she had, like, great hair, but, uh... She, it was weird because she was really into the uh, Bay City Rollers, and it sort of put me off a bit, but not enough, you know? I mean, I was wearing shorts, and, uh... The, um... Protuberant. Uh, at that stage, I used to wear a lot of sacking. Quite genuine, I used to have a... There's a lot of sacking clothing with hoods. It's striped mainly. I was wearing a pair of jeans and a sort of grey sweatshirt, sweatshirt top thing I really liked. And, um, and I had a Mickey Mouse watch on. Um, nothing. Um, shared a sheet. Right, there was a sheet. I mean, it was minimal, but there was a sheet. <laughs> I took my trousers off and my underpants, but that was all. And she, she only took off her bottom. She didn't take off her top or anything. She just took off her, her skirt and her knickers and that was it. And we were in. I think she, I know she took her shoes off as far as I recall. <coughs> that was it. It was a sort of bit by bit thing. You know, it wasn't a, because again, these things, very often not planned. I mean, so it wasn't 
I was thinking, right, tonight we're going to do this. Let's take all our clothes off and do it. I don't, well, I guess maybe it works like that sometimes for people, but um, it, it wasn't for me, no. I couldn't understand uh, why she was taking her knickers off. It was a real uh, knee trembler at first. And uh, I didn't know what she was about. She, she led me on. She was wearing tights. Tights and uh, pearl blue, bright blue platform boots. And she like, lifted the dress up. I remember that was a spectacular sight. Oh, they seem to go on forever. And, you know, let's do it then, is what I, my mind said to myself. You want to do it. You want to get it, do it now to that, because that looks great. I had I'd, an overwhelming feeling of, I am doing it, and then subsequently, I have done it. It probably lasted, I don't know, about five minutes, but it seemed to be about two and a half seconds. 20 minutes? Tops? <laughs> <laughs> well, it took a long time because of, because of my problem. It seemed to be over very quickly. Upwards of 15 seconds. I don't know, perhaps five minutes. I would say approximately 18 seconds. I couldn't come, you see. I couldn't come. A few minutes or seconds or something. 11 minutes. It just took ages. You know, for what we paid, it was a hell of a lot. Uh, it, it went very quickly. Up to that date, you know, it had taken about 14 years. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't because of the sex. I just enjoyed feeling some sort of power, I think, and feeling kind of um, sexy as opposed to the sex itself. Well, uh, I was exhausted. I remember being terribly tired and, and you know, you, the way your legs go when, you, when you've been lying in that position for a while. I felt very peculiar and kind of crashed and rumpled and... I felt that I'd, in a funny sort of way, kind of grown up a bit, I suppose. Well, I suppose I had grown up a bit because it's quite a, a step to take. I think maybe more so for a woman than a man. I don't know, I've never really asked a man. I felt a kind of a bit blank, really, and I just didn't... I didn't know what the kind of social etiquette was, whether you should make polite conversation or, you know, do you want me to go get you a cup of tea or...? <laughs> I mean, nothing was ever said. I mean, we didn't talk. You don't talk. It was, uh, you, just, you know, you don't talk about the quality of a bottle of cider, you just drink it. It was, uh... He did. <laughs> he did. He talked a lot. He kept going, oh, you're magnificent. Oh, my God, it's amazing. But I think it was quite kind of, um... I think he just used to read loads of porn books and stuff and thought that was how you were supposed to talk when you were having sex. I don't think it was anything specific to me, do you know what I mean? I think I might have said, come on, girl, let's get, really get down to it. Afterwards, we put our clothes back on and walked through the rest of the park. We could hear a tramp snoring from inside the bandstand. Again, I can't remember if we spoke at all. 
we went back into town and caught our respective night buses home. I didn't tell anyone about it for at least five years afterwards. It seemed like it would lose its magic if I told anyone else. It wasn't that the actual sex had been so great. It was more that it was a secret that only two people in the whole world knew about. I think everyone kind of has, has in their mind a whole scenario before they do it of what it's going to be like. And it just wasn't like that at all. I thought it would sort of feel very different. Um, I thought I'd kind of be sort of transported on waves of ecstasy for hours on end, you know. And of course it wasn't like that at all. It was a bit sort of boring and it was very quick and it was, it was all a bit drab really, I suppose. It was like the most amazing thing that has ever happened to me, ever because cause I'd been not getting it together for so long that now it was, it was Blakeian, right? And the gates of perception opening, it was, it was like um, the most extraordinary sense of, of euphoria. Um, my expectations were so minimal that I suppose it really, you know, I, I, I didn't uh, have any expectations of it at all. I was really rather dreading it, to be honest, because uh, having got to, as I say, nearly 22, I assumed that it was one of those things that I'd probably never experienced, like, like hang gliding, you know. It actually was all just a surprise, because the things that I liked about it had nothing to do with, I don't know, I expected to have sort of 25 orgasms is what my head to explain. I don't know what I thought was going to happen, but none of that happened. I didn't have any. I didn't have any. And it's like before that, I was sort of a, a... It was a bit of a boy's own thing, where you used to try and eavesdrop on other people's conversations and try and, like, work out what it was all about. Although I had these kind of fantasies that the first time would be fantastic, I think I kind of knew at the back of my mind that it was something that you had to practice a bit to get good at. So I thought, the sooner I start getting it out of the way and having a bit of practice, the better it'll be. Well, the practice sessions I had were always very, very good. And I was having an affair with a, a woman who was advertising microphones in the music scene in my mind. Didn't quite live up to that. I've always been one for uh, masturbating, you know. And so, you know, like, and, but masturbating over the idea of what it would be like to insert. So you've got to bring that to a conclusion. Well, I thought there was something wrong with myself being as masturbatory as I was. And uh, if I could share that with someone, not that I was really, uh, that, that made things proper. I never equated um, my masturbation and uh, joy at ejaculation with um, uh, making children or uh, doing things that were proper, um, certainly not Catholic. I'd have loved it to have gone differently. As I say, I'd have loved it to have happened. I, mean, I should have done it when I really, when I really wanted to do it. It would have been great if I'd have lived in like the King's Road and you know there were artists popping in and it was flowery and uh, you know. But no, it's uh, how it was. It was like growing up in Coventry in the early seventies. It was very snatchy, you know. No. The exploration, the uh, no, I I, I wouldn't uh, change that. Oh, definitely, I would love to have done a really sort of exotic, a la Hollywood, you know, big 
beautiful big bed and a naked lady rolling around and me naked and we carried on for hours, but it cost some money, I don't find if you were to do it that way. <laughs> it would have been different. There was a girl who um, I was very fond of and uh, she came around to my house one afternoon when my parents were out and uh, dressed in a very sexy manner and uh, made it very clear that it was on offer. But I was more interested in playing the Hendrix albums and showing my guitar and then I took terrible fright and uh, packed her away off to the bus stop. So I often look back on that one and thought that could have been very pleasurable but it never took place. But yes and no, really. I suppose there's a kind of um, kind of Jackie reader in me who <laughs> really wanted it to be in some really kind of lush, beautiful bed with, you know, sort of champagne and some man that I was desperately in love with, yeah. But then the other part of me is really quite fond of the fact that it was Dave in the back of the car, around the back of my ones. I quite like it. Well, yes, I mean, obviously, if you... Ideally, you'd like a very romantic setting with a much more kind of experienced partner, I guess. But in a way, the um, looking back, the fun of it was that here were two relatively young people who hadn't got a lot of experience. And so that was quite nice that, that we were on an equal footing rather than, I think I would have been quite frightened actually thinking of it if it had been an older man who was very knowledgeable I'd have felt a bit overwhelmed by that yeah I mean obviously I'd I think I'd have preferred it to be with someone that was probably a lot more experienced um, I'd have preferred this person's mum not to have come in the bathroom and caught me with hardly any clothes on and uh, threatened to tell my mum which she didn't thankfully in the end um, and I think I'd have preferred it to be somewhere a bit more comfortable because uh, sort of in a bathroom with your head in danger of hitting against the bottom of the toilet is probably not the most ideal situation in which to have sex. Yeah, I think I'd have rather um, sort of done it with, uh, with someone that was a bit younger and a bit more... Um, innocent as well, really, because uh, after um, that summer, I started going out with this guy for years and years, and I, I pretended to him that I was still a virgin, and I think it was probably a shame that I wasn't really. It would have been nice if it had been uh, uh, with somebody that I had some genuine feeling for. You know, but on the other hand, perhaps uh, a, a few kind of rather clumsy and uh, uh, uninvolved experiences first enable you to, when you do do finally do it with somebody that you love. I mean, I think it is a kind of on a different level altogether anyway. So it at least helps you with the, with the kind of mechanical aspects of it. Looking back on it now, I don't feel bad about anything. It was necessary something I had to do in order to move on to the next thing. It doesn't really matter that the relationship ended badly and we're not in touch anymore. Or that this isn't even the real patch of grass we did it on. We're just a grass verge near Clapham Common Tube Station. I guess everyone must have a word that sums it up for them. And my word is that. Necessary. One word. Weak old liver and a rum-soaked mattress. Well, that's more than one word, isn't it? <laughs> um, thrilling. Uh, untidy, I think, would do. Uneventful. Well, I'll give it in two words. OK. Exhilarating, I think. Grubby. Interesting. 
Hooray. Oh my goodness. Innocent, I suppose. I had an, uh, an innocence about it, which is quite refreshing. Fantastic. <laughs> Unfortunately, it'd have to be disappointing. Um, f***ing amazing. Um, yeah. Relief. Sounds so corny, but I was sort of ecstatic. If I'd had a football rattle in the scarf, I'd have run outside and, uh, and told everybody. <laughs>